Good morning and a very warm welcome to you as we worship together from our home to yours. A warm greeting. Jedediah says hello as well. It's lovely to be with you. And uh, as we continue our journey towards the 24th of November and this idea of living a life of thanksgiving, today we get to our thoughts on being thankful. So last week, we looked at an attitude of gratitude. We looked at how gratitude is something that needs to happen inside of us. It's something we feel, something we experience, but ultimately it needs to be expressed in our lives. And today there are many things that we are grateful for, but, but maybe one of the greatest privileges that we have is to be able to worship God in freedom without persecution and to have this medium online where we're able to worship God together. And, and I do pray that uh, the service will be a blessing to you. And uh, if, if the service has been a blessing to you, won't you drop me a WhatsApp? Uh, not, not so much to, to say thank you to me, but just to say, Lord, I'm grateful for the service and give, give us some idea of what the service means to you. As we worship God together, our call to worship comes from Psalm 28 and verse 7. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in him and I am helped. My heart leaps for joy and I will give thanks to him in song. Let us worship God together.
Let's pray. O Lord God, Lord of life, we praise you for the morning, for the gift of this new day, and for the grace that you offer us. Take us from the dimness of our sights, that we may see the glory of your work in the world and in the hearts of men, women, and children. We bless you for your daily providence and for the peace you give us. Thank you for a peace that triumphs over all the turbulence in the world. We glorify you this morning for the love that you revealed to us in Jesus Christ. Thank you for girding us with the strength of your spirit. And thank you that through you we might strive for righteousness in our own lives and for truth and justice in the world. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Merciful God, we confess to you that we have sinned. We confess the sin that everybody knows, the sin that nobody knows, the sins that are a burden to us, and the sins that do not bother us because we have got so used to them. We confess our sins as a church. We have not loved one another as Christ has loved us. We have not forgiven one another as we have been forgiven. We have not given ourselves in love and service to the world as Christ gave himself for us. Hear our prayers of confession as we offer them in the silence of our hearts. Here is the good news of the gospel. Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners. Thank you, Lord, that you have forgiven us from our failure, that you accept us as we are, that you set us free from the power of evil and make us who we were meant to be. Thank you for your redeeming and restoring love. In Jesus' name, Amen.
morning boys and girls today i'm going to talk about god's great plan so this is a book that rj and i read all the time we actually read it every night and i've realized that rj does not understand this book very much and i got him something small and this one here it's the big story of god but this one says you are part of it so rj is part of it you are also part of the story of god when you open this pamphlet you see all the stories that happened in the bible there's creation there's the tower of babel there's abraham and when you look closely there there's noah and then when you look there there's you you are the church so as the church we are followers of christ and following christ is an adventure right following a christ following christ is an adventure so as a follower of christ you're a friend of god and as a follower of Christ, you choose to do what is right. And as a follower of Christ, you are kind and fair to everyone. And again, as a follower of Christ, you live according to the way God wants you to live. So um, boys and girls, we need to live according to the way God wants us to live. And go on this adventure and be part of this big plan of God. Okay, boys and girls, let's pray. Thank you, God, for this time that we can be um, hearing your word and i thank you god that we are the church and you chose us you brought us on this adventure and i pray god even as we journey with you as we walk with you that will bring others to know you will tell others about this adventure and they will come to know you in jesus name i pray amen jesus loves me We have two scripture readings this morning. The first is from Paul's letter to the Colossians. And we need to bear in mind that the Colossian church was suffering from false teaching. They were being threatened by false teaching. On the one hand, some of them were tempted to become legalists, proving their worth to God through a life of do's and don'ts. The other side were tempted to become philosophical in their faith concentrating on their thoughts and the intricacy of their thoughts rather than on the simple truth that Christ had forgiven them. Paul addresses their problems theologically, but then in chapter 3, he also has to address their challenges 
through a change in lifestyle because theology on its own is just something of the head. It has to be translated into action. And so Paul encourages them that if they've found peace in Christ, if they've found forgiveness, if they've found redemption, then they need to live a different kind of life. And so he talks about a life where they set aside evil and brokenness, a life where they embrace the goodness of Christ. And right at the end of this kind of new uniform that he invites them to put on, because he talks about taking off and putting on, at the end of this description, he sums it up with a life of gratitude. Our second reading is from Paul's letter to Timothy, where Paul talks a little bit about his gratitude in the light of his salvation. And it's really just Paul giving his testimony. But I, I'd encourage you, think of it as Paul saying, I was a prisoner, but now I'm free. Think of it as Paul's version of John Newton's Amazing Grace. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Because here in, in Timothy, Paul is saying something similar. Let's listen to God's word. Colossians three fifteen to 17 Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom, and as you sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, with gratitude in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. 1 Timothy 1 verses 12 to 14 I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who has given me strength, that he considered me faithful, appointing me to his service. Even though I was once a blasphemer and a persecutor and a violent man, I was shown mercy because I acted in ignorance and unbelief. The grace of our Lord was poured out on me abundantly, along with the faith and love that are in Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Father, as we reflect on your word, may the words of my mouth and the thoughts and meditation of our hearts bring you praise and glory, now and forevermore. Amen. So I've been talking about being grateful and thankful and blessed since the 16th of October, since our day of giving. And, and in fact, a few days before that in, in the check-in that I sent out. And so, as you can imagine, as I sit down to do my preparation, I'm starting to think, wow, will I have something new to say? And I've been reading the scriptures about gratitude, but I've also been looking at one or two articles and one or two books and one of the books that I came across is a book entitled Practicing Thankfulness, Cultivating a Grateful Heart in All Circumstances. And it's written by Sam Crabtree, who is a Baptist minister in Minnesota. Now, the book grabbed my attention for two reasons. The first was the title, because his focus is practicing thankfulness, cultivating a grateful heart. And that fits in exactly with what I've been saying, is that gratitude is not enough. Gratitude is a feeling, it's an emotion, it's an awareness, but it has to be translated into action. Gratitude has to become thankfulness. And so I like the title of the book, and when I read the introductory chapter, it felt the same to me, and so I've bought the book and, and have, have been reading it since then. The second reason that the book grabbed my attention was that one of the reviews that is in the front pages and on the back cover of the book was written by Johnny Erickson Tada, who is somebody I respect a great deal and whose story I have followed over the years. This is what she wrote. After more than 50 years of living as a quadriplegic, I can definitely say that godly gratitude is the key to contentment. It's why I'm so excited about Sam Crabtree's Practicing Thankfulness. This remarkable work provides thorough biblical support as to how God-focused gratitude alters a Christian's orientation to himself, to others, and ultimately to the Lord himself. The pages are filled with practical guidelines 
to help a believer seize every life situation as a powerful opportunity to cultivate a glad and thankful heart. I give practicing thankful thankfulness a double thumbs up. And so the book came highly recommended and it had a, an interesting title. And as I've started reading the book, there are just two quotes that I want to share with you that stood out for me. The first is that he talks about how pivotal, how life changing, how, how life altering this decision to be grateful and thankful can be. He says this, thankfulness is not just a religious duty or a task on a list or something nice people do or a simple protocol of good manners to be taught to children. Rather, thankfulness is a powerful force. It wins or loses the war for your future. When practiced, it works toward beauty and produces fruit. When ignored, it works towards ugliness and chokes out life. At stake is the vitality of every human relationship without exception. The second quote that I want to read kind of answers the question of, but I know being thankful is important. Why do you need to go on and on about this? And, and some of you might be thinking about this in terms of the sermon series. You know, come on, Theo, we get the point. We need to be grateful and thankful. But, but why are you going on about this? And he says, Sam Crabtree says this. He says, but just as a fire eventually flickers and dies out if left untended, gratitude can easily weaken and fade away if ignored in a world of distractions, busyness, and painful troubles. Daily life throws cold water on the smoldering embers of gratefulness in our hearts. And so there we have it. Uh, a great book and, and a great couple of thoughts on the importance of gratitude in our hearts and thankfulness expressed in our lives. But I want to take this a little bit further because last week we looked at Psalm 103, which taught us how to cultivate gratitude in our hearts. But I want to talk about gratitude as part of our Christian lives. Now, as I mentioned in the introduction, Paul was writing to the Colossian church, which was threatened by false teaching. They could become legalists on the one hand or philosophers on the other. Paul had to encourage them. He had to warn them about the dangers of being sucked into these two kinds of false teaching. And so he talks about a lifestyle, a lifestyle that is focused on the peace that Christ has given us because we are saved through his love and through his sacrifice on the cross for us. And so he talks about how they can live a different life. And this is particularly geared to those who wanted to just turn their faith into something philosophical. But it also was geared towards those who wanted to turn legalist actions into a way of saving themselves. Because Paul says everything we do is not to earn our salvation, but to give thanks for it. And so he talks about a thankful life. And the section that we heard read to us this morning started with being thankful. It had gratitude in the middle and it ended with giving thanks. And if we look at the passage carefully and I put it on screen for you to have a look at here, then we see that a life of thanksgiving or thankfulness, a life of giving thanks, a life with grateful hearts, really has four components in it, as Paul talks about it. As he's encouraging the Colossians to live out a life where Christ has saved them and given them peace, he says, a grateful life is filled with God's word. That we put God's word in our hearts and that God's word will teach us what God has done for us, what God is like. It will show us that God is good, that God is grace, that God is love. It will show us the right way to live. God's word will remind us of how great our salvation is and how incredible the love of God is. If ever we needed a resource for 
learning how to be thankful or a, a set of reasons to be thankful, God's word will pro provide that for us. It's the repository of information that will show us how grateful we, we, we can be and how much God has done for us. The second point that Paul makes is that when we're thankful people, then we live in the kind of community where we can teach and admonish one another. That, that we can live lives in which we have an impact on each other's lives. And that, that we can make a difference in each other's lives. And when we do this in the name of Christ, when we do this in, in service of God, then this becomes grateful living. When we positively impact our fellow human beings, this is what gratitude lived out looks like. This is thankfulness, making a difference for our fellow human being, living in community with our fellow human beings, encouraging one another, uh, spurring one another on toward good deeds. These things are what thankfulness expressed in community looks like. The third point that Paul makes is one that I have just come to love more and more. Because what Paul is talking about here, and it can sound almost a little bit whimsical, is that we need to go through life singing songs. That we need to have a, a soundtrack of, of worship and gratitude and thankfulness playing in our hearts and minds. And for those who have recently been to the Global Leadership Summit, the top rated talk at the summit was about the soundtracks that we play in our minds. And the speaker spoke about how we play different soundtracks in our minds and they affect us. Paul is suggesting a soundtrack be a soundtrack of adoration and worship and thanksgiving. That our lives become one that are filled with song. That there is a, a sense of joy, a sense of, of playfulness and thankfulness and gratitude, a, a, a soundtrack of worship being played in our hearts, that, that while we're washing the dishes or driving in the traffic, there be psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, that, that we do everything with an awareness that, that we are loved by God, saved by grace, and that we have a, a, a reason to sing because of what Christ has done for us. The third thing that, at least the fourth thing that Paul points out in a life of gratitude is that we do everything in the name of Christ. In other words, we become aware that no matter what we do, whether we have to scrub a dustbin or, 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 or clean a drain or pick up you know, the clutter after somebody else, God is present in those moments and his presence makes those moments holy and good and that we can find meaning doing those things aware that, that he is with us, watching us and that how we do these things could profoundly either be an act of worship or something that, that we are simply miserable in. And we have a choice to do things in the name of Christ or to do things out of duty or even out of misery. But when we do things in the name of Christ, we know and realize that he would carry a cross for us, that he would die on a cross for us. And so he has done the most difficult things. And so no matter how difficult life can be, we can do so in his name, bearing in mind that he is with us. And so what Paul is suggesting is that we read God's word, that we live in community, that we live with a soundtrack of singing, and that we do things in Christ's name all the time, being thankful. And being thankful means that this is not a duty. It's not me earning my salvation or earning points with God. This means that my life, my attitude and my vibe, in other words, the way that I'm doing this thing, whatever it is, whether I'm raking the garden or tidying up after 
busy kids or, or sorting out difficult circumstances, the vibe, the way I do that can be an offering to God. If I do so with a sense of how much he has done for me. That if Christ could go to the cross for me, I can do all sorts of things, even boring mundane tasks, even difficult and hard sore tasks, I can do for him because he has been good to me. So let me conclude. There are many things that we can be thankful for. We can be thankful for our homes, our houses, our families, our loved ones. We can count our blessings, and we should. And those lists can be long. They, they, they are often so much more than we can even think or imagine. And they definitely are more than our list of complaints. But Paul hones in on the one thing that he is more grateful for than anything else. And as he writes to Timothy, he says, I thank God because, because I know where I've come from. I was a blasphemer, a persecutor. I was violent, ignorant, and unbelieving. And yet Christ saved me. You see, Paul realizes that that is the single most important thing to be thankful for. Yes, we are thankful for all the other things. But first and foremost, we are thankful that Christ saved us. So what does Paul do? He fills his heart with the word of God. And we see this in all of his teaching and the way in which he unpacks the scriptures. Secondly, we see how Paul devoted his life to others, teaching and admonishing them. And then we see how Paul sang songs of worship, even in a Philippian jail when he had been whipped and imprisoned and victimized. And we see how Paul did everything in the name of Jesus. Even on a sinking ship when he was a prisoner, he broke bread and gave it to everybody in the ship in the name of Jesus. And so Paul sets the example for us. Paul follows his own advice, the advice he gave to the Colossians, he practices in his own life. And I would encourage you and me to live lives of gratitude and thankfulness. Grateful and thankful for our salvation. Lives in which we give thanks to God through our lives for what he has done to us. And let's recap those four critical areas. His word, immersing ourselves in God's word. Community, teaching and admonishing one another, being part of Christian community where we can live out our gratitude and help each other to be grateful. In living lives with a soundtrack of worship and praise and adoration, that our lives become lives in which we're ready to burst into song at any moment where we're humming the melody of grace and forgiveness, where, where we're just constantly keeping that soundtrack alive. I'm saved. I'm a child of God. I'm forgiven and I'm loved. Finally, we do things in the name of Christ, no matter what we do, whether it's driving in the traffic, whether it's cleaning up someone's mess, whether it's heart sore or challenging or difficult or boring or mundane. We do it in the name of Christ. And in doing so, we will make that moment holy and it will become an expression of gratitude. It's my prayer that we will learn how to be thankful as we do these four things. And I believe that if we do, we as individuals and we as the people of God will become an unstoppable force of grace and love and grateful thankfulness in a world that needs to see Christ's light.
And so I pray that this is exactly what we would do. Amen. we can't take up a physical offering, we can still respond to God's word and goodness by offering ourselves. Let's pray. Gracious God, please receive the gifts we give, but most importantly, God, the gift of our lives and the offering of our services in every way and any way whatsoever, so that we can carry your love from this place to a world of great need. We ask this in God's holy name. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, we don't even begin to know how to give thanks for what you did on the cross for us. And so in many ways, it's actually just right and fitting that we spend the rest of our lives practicing and honing our thankfulness and, and our gratitude expressed to you. Lord, we thank you for your love. We thank you for what your son did on the cross for us. We thank you for the peace, the forgiveness, the salvation and restoration that is ours through the sacrifice that he made. And we thank you that you never gave up on us, but that your love was revealed in the fullness of what he came to do for us. Thank you, Lord, for your love and thank you for saving us. And Lord, we also thank you for our blessings, for the full lives that we have, for all that you give us. And we pray that you would give us the grace and the courage and the gratitude in our hearts that we would live thankful lives, immersed in your word, living in community, keeping a soundtrack of, of praise and adoration and worship in our hearts and making every moment holy as we do things in your name. Help us to live like this, and help us to show your love to the world. And so we pray, Father, for, for ourselves and for those near and dear to us. We whisper the names of those who are in need before you, and we pray for our world. We pray for our country and its leaders. We pray for our young people writing exams. We pray for folk who are tired and exhausted at a year end and ask for your, your strength, your peace, your grace and your love. We pray all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
It has been such a privilege to be with you this morning, and I do pray that you have found this service meaningful. And I do pray that you'll take up the challenge to live out a life of thankfulness, that you would immerse yourself in God's word, that you would connect to community, and, and maybe to say, yeah, this is especially vital if you're watching the service online, because as great as it is that, that we can do these services online, online is no replacement for community. And so I do urge you to seek Christian fellowship, whether it be in a small group, in a Bible study, or at a service on a Sunday morning. Do connect to fellow believers where you can be taught and admonished and in turn teach and admonish. And then keep that soundtrack of worship and thanksgiving and adoration playing in your heart. Sing those songs. Offer that worship. And take tough and menial moments and make them holy by doing them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. As we do so, this is our offering. This is our worship. This is our sacrifice of thanksgiving. And it expresses our conviction that God has been good to us and that we will live out that goodness in a life of thanksgiving. And it glorifies Him and honors His name. And the world will see and follow. I do want to remind you that we'll be working our way towards the 24th of November where we're going to be encouraging folk and in your homes, in your families, amongst your friends, on the 24th, which is the American Day of Thanksgiving, it's the day before Black Friday here in South Africa, take a moment to, to focus on gratitude and thankfulness. Take a moment to express that Thanksgiving in some kind of, of way that reflects that through through a meal, through a gathering, through a tea together, through whatever it is that, that comes to your heart and mind. Take a moment to express gratitude and thanksgiving and, and, and be creative about it. Do something special and, and take a moment to count your blessings. I also remind you that we are putting together a prayer group to support uh, Anastasia Kaunda, Stacy Kaunda, who is our Scripture Union worker. And those details are on the screen now. Please do drop her a message and join up with her prayer group so that we can keep her work, the important work she's doing in Pretoria East in our schools, in prayer. And so go into this week, live grateful lives, and may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Spirit be with us and remain with us as we live thankful lives. Amen. Good morning, here are the birthdays for Grace and Emmanuel. Sunday we've got Kian, turning 16, Marius and Danike. Tuesday we've got Jessica, Stan and Lissette, turning 4. Wednesday we've got Joan, Kayleen, Matthew, turning 17 and Lavlin. Thursday we've got Kirsty, Mike, James, turning 12, Dion, Venona and Annette. Friday we've got Linda. Saturday, we've got Sally, Piper, turning 10, Gavin, Caroline, and Gerhard. We've got one wedding anniversary on Tuesday the 15th for Kirsty, 
and Craig celebrating their 25 wedding anniversaries. Let us bow our heads and pray for our dear friends. <clears throat> Father, as we celebrate our dear friends' birthdays and anniversary today and the week ahead, we thank you for blessing them with another special day to celebrate. May they always walk through life believing and trusting in God, for he alone can supply them with all their needs and put a smile on their faces. Bless them throughout the year ahead of them. In Jesus' name, Amen.